Greetings and welcome. Conventional wisdom says that all of the major discoveries worth discovering have been discovered outside the deep ocean. This isn't even a newly developed idea or opinion. Famous naturalist and anatomist Georges Cuvier discounted the likelihood of finding any new large quadruped species back in 1812. The most recent large quadruped discovered was in 1992. That's 180 years later. This discovery brought the number of large quadrupeds discovered since Cuvier's dictum to 335. Currently, scientists have classified about 1.9 million plant and animal species. Yet, Estimates for the total number of species across the globe is upwards of 50 million. If accurate, this means we've only discovered about 5% of the plant and animal species that are on the planet today. There is still so much to discover. Here's 10 of the rarest and most mysterious animals we've discovered so far. The Saiga antelope, or Saiga tatarica. Their bulbous noses are reminiscent of something right out of Star Wars. Yet, they are from right here on this planet. They were originally endemic to almost all of Eurasia, but are currently restricted to a small part in the southwest of Asia and a little bit of Europe. They average about the size of a Great Dane. That amazing proboscis-like nose is thought to provide many benefits to its owner. One, warming the frigid winter air. Two, filtering dust from the dry summer air and three, amplifying their mating calls. Currently, they are threatened by a trifecta of problems. Habitat loss, poaching, and disease. Thankfully, multiple organizations worldwide are working to change all that. Before I continue, I've not been doing this long, but so far I really enjoy sharing all of this knowledge with you. If you've enjoyed watching, please take a second and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications, that way you never miss anything new. It only takes a moment for you, but it can make a big difference for me. Onwards! The Pink Fairy Armadillo, Clamifortis truncatus. No larger than a dollar bill, these tiny, nocturnal creatures are native to central Argentina. They spend the majority of their time underground, so instead of protection, their shell is full of blood vessels to help facilitate thermal regulation. Not only are they elusive, but they don't survive well in captivity, so our knowledge about them is very limited. In fact, one biologist spent almost a decade in the field studying them and never managed to see one in person. They are currently listed as endangered and conservation efforts are ongoing. However, our serious lack of knowledge makes that tricky. The Honduran white bat, or the Caribbean white tent-making bat, Ectophila alba. Out of over 1,300 known species of bat, there are only six that have any white fur, and this is the only species with only white fur. Surprisingly enough, this white fur acts as excellent camouflage. During the day, as they roost in their tents, it makes them all but invisible. They make these tents by strategically cutting the ribs 
on the leaves of the helicona plant. They also seem to maintain multiple tents throughout their range. Observations show it feeding exclusively on the fruit from a single species of fig tree. It's assumed that they supplement this somehow in order to maintain proper nutrition, but how is currently unknown. Another standout feature of these bats is their yellow skin. The yellow color is because of a high concentration of carotenoids in their skin. That carotenoid's unique composition is currently being studied to help treat macular degeneration. As a bonus, this has caused increased funding to help protect them. The Bobby Rusa, or deer pig, Bobby Rusus celebensis, a member of the wild pig family. However, they do differ significantly from your standard pig. The most obvious is their magnificent tusks. The upper pair grows so large they actually curl around and pierce through the roof of the mouth out the top of the skull and continue growing. It doesn't seem to cause the animal any pain or distress. What may be the largest difference is actually their two-chambered stomach system. It's much closer to what you would find in a sheep than what you find in a pig. This would normally make them herbivorous, like sheep and goats and things like that. However, Bobby Rusas are absolutely omnivorous, which leaves their classification as a matter of debate. Current numbers across all species are estimated to be less than 10,000 with conservation efforts ongoing. The lowland streaked tenric, hemicentesis semispinosis. Another tiny entry on our list, these mini pincushions are less than six inches long and weigh a maximum of about half a pound. Although similar in many ways to hedgehogs, they share very little genetic relation. Their closest genetic relatives are actually elephants and aardvarks. Native to the lowland tropical rainforest of Madagascar. They live in large complex burrows with family units of up to 20 members. What makes these incredibly unique is they actually use stridulation for part of their communication. Stridulation is the act of producing sound by rubbing two body parts together, just like crickets. In this case, they use spines. They are the only mammal that has ever been recorded using this method of communication. The rusty spotted cat, Prionolaris rubiginosus, the world's smallest wildcat. It grows to a maximum of eight inches tall, two and a half feet long, that's with tail, and weigh at a maximum of about three and a half pounds. For comparison, your average domestic house cat weighs about eight pounds. They live mostly in Sri Lanka, but have also been witnessed in both India and Nepal. These guys are mostly nocturnal, tiny, and right at home in the dense forest. This makes learning about them very hard which in turn makes conservation efforts very hard. The chevrotain, or mouse deer. Tragulus javicus. It may look like both, but in fact is a member of its own unique group of hoofed animals. Like many members on our list, these animals are unbelievably small. The mouse deer only weigh about four pounds, or roughly the size of a large rabbit. 
They are completely herbivorous, so their large, almost out-of-place fangs are only used to compete for mates and territory. They make their home in Southeast Asia, and like so many others in that area, their largest threat is habitat loss. Vampire deer. It sounds like the name of a cheesy horror movie. We don't actually call them vampire deer, but they're real. The water deer, Hydropodus inermis. They are native to parts of Vietnam and China. Smaller than they look, they top out at around 30 pounds. What makes them the perfect cheesy movie villain is how much control they have over their fangs. They're loosely mounted in the sockets, and they have special facial muscles so they can point the fangs whichever direction they want. They can point them forward in aggression when competing for mates and territory, and they can actually fold them back when it comes to grazing. The Okapi, forest giraffe, Congolese giraffe, zebra giraffe, or a copy, John Stoney. Standing around five feet tall, eight feet long, and around 800 pounds, these giraffe cousins are right at home in the forests of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. They look like such a perfect zebra giraffe hybrid that even after multiple accounts and stories, it wasn't until 1901 they were actually accepted as a real species. Thankfully enough, an increase in recent public awareness has also increased conservation efforts. The last entry on our list today is the rarest large land mammal on the planet. With potentially less than a thousand individuals remaining. Roughly three feet tall, five feet long, and about 200 pounds, it was only discovered in 1992 when an odd skull was found in the home of a local hunter. This is the Saula, the spindle horn, the Asian unicorn, the Vu Quang ox, or Sudorix in Gedenhansis, native to the Anamite forest, which runs down the border between Vietnam and Laos. While very similar in appearance to a goat, they actually belong to their own unique species. For years, there have been local stories, and more recently, we have found remains and captured images on trail camps. But to this day, a biologist has never seen one in the wild. Their extreme rarity and our utter lack of understanding, just like other entries today, makes conservation efforts incredibly difficult. Thankfully enough, there are a few groups that are committed to saving the Saula regardless of the difficulties. Science and discovery are all about being open-minded. You should never run into an idea or concept that completely derails your ability to think and reason. Never 100% dismiss a reasonable idea, reasonable idea, without clear evidence. This is why Bigfoot is one of my favorite talking points, especially with people who immediately dismiss the possibility. The continental United States has over 89,000 square miles or 230,000 square kilometers of officially protected wilderness. If you include Alaska, that's 174,000 square miles or 450,000 square kilometers. The region the Saula was discovered in only covers 36,000 square miles or 94,000 square kilometers. While I agree the likelihood of a human-sized primate existing today without clear evidence 
in the world's third most populated country is incredibly low. Yet that doesn't mean there isn't still tons of stuff out there to discover. And I think, if anything, today's animals prove that. The wonder is out there. We just have to be looking for it. <laughs> 